Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to basically build um, some site topography utilizing some uh, topographic contours. Uh, I'm not going to cover how to draw these contours or anything like that. I'm assuming that um, based on other tutorials, you can either use a bitmap tracing or you can import the geometry out of CAD. Uh, however you guys get them, um, I'm assuming that you guys already have those geometries in here. Uh, I have a relatively basic setup here. Um, this is just going to cover some of the basic techniques in terms of getting this accomplished. Uh, so if you look at each one of these uh, pieces of topography, they're separated by each by one foot increments in here. And you can see that this starts to move up and down. And so I've appropriately located all the geometries already. And uh, that, that's something I assume that you guys can do at this point. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, the first technique, um, probably the easiest, and um, this will also be the lightest on the rendering, uh, will be to just simply do an extrude curve command and uh, if you turn on or turn on cap and the direction is already set in the direction we want it to but we basically go the distance um, between each uh, to topographic element then we can go in here and actually generate uh, this nice topography here um, this is really easy quick and dirty and so then when we come in um, it'll be a relatively lightweight set of geometries uh, as we go through it and you get some softer shadows uh, not so heavy on the the material there. Um, the other thing we can do, um, and this is probably what you actually will end up doing, if you just said you want to take uh, smooth topography and you want to take this to a CNC mill and have this cut out of foam, uh, you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, and the tool you're going to use to utilize to do that is the patch tool. And so we'll go ahead and click on the patch tool uh, located right here, uh, or you can just type patch for command line. And this is going to give you a couple of different settings in here. Um, you can sample, it, the presets are going to look something like this, uh, 10 by 10 um, in terms of the UNV coordinates. Um, if you're not familiar with UNV, that's basically the X, Y, and Z for a particular surface, it's UV and W. Um, so, and you'll see how that maps out onto the surface once I get this set up. Uh, the number of sampling points uh, and spacing, you can increase or decrease that uh, to start to get a smoother or um, smoother set of geometries out of the patch command. Uh, the stiffness is going to control uh, how uh, tight it is to the, the actual curves. Um, and the higher you have these settings, uh, the heavier the surface is going to become, but also more accurate. So uh, you got to think about this as the number of actual location, control point locations for the surface that you're going to start to see. Uh, so if I come in here, and I've turned off automatic trim so I can um, basically I don't want the computer to trim it out because it's going to get close, but not very accurate. And I want to be able to come back in afterwards and, and trim that out. So that's okay. Uh, and you can see uh, we have this guy that's nice, nicely flowing through and extending in here. And this is, if we zoom out, you can see the U and V coordinates here. We have the U and, or sorry, the U in the X direction and the V in the Y direction. Uh, and so we can start to look at this and I'm going to go ahead and change my active layer. So we can, let's take a look at how accurate this is just real quick. So we're going to use the contour command to sort of test this. I'm going to table my stamps here, set the direction, and then uh, I've already set the distance to one because I was uh, testing it previously. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we can switch to take a look at this. If we slow this up and we'll turn off our isoparms, we can start to take a look at how accurate we were, and you can see here that we really were close, but we're really not all that accurate. Um, and that may be good enough, that may not be good enough, but uh, you have to sort of dial that in according to what you think is appropriate. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to basically get that a little bit closer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, repeat the patch command. We're going to go ahead and say, let's just increase this to 100. I'm going to increase the stiffness. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Hit OK. And it's going to sync. Uh, and now we have a different layer, but we should have a much more consistent um, sort of adherence to the, the input curves here. All right. And so then we can go ahead and come in here. And again, I'll change the layer. Um, that's going to put this to something we can see. And I'll go ahead and or, uh, it's important when you guys are doing the contour that you pick the, uh, the appropriate origin point. If you don't, uh, it's going to start and be a little bit off. So make sure that wherever you're starting, you're on one of those contours. 
right? Because otherwise nothing's going to align. All right, and so we can come in here and we can zoom in and we can start to see that this is uh, significantly more accurate as we start to get in here. And we're still a little bit off, but uh, that's probably acceptable as you guys get into this. Um, and so we can start to see that that's more or less exactly what the topography is. And now we have a surface uh, that we can utilize for the rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and set that as my active layer. And we're going to do some other operations here. Uh, I, I noted that I actually turned trim this out, right? And I set this up myself up so that I could potentially trim this out. You guys can build site contours uh, if you like, uh, but to trim this out, you just take your edge curve and do an extrude curve. I'm gonna hit both directions just to make sure that I'm able to trim this. And then we can use the, the split or the trim command or whichever your personal preference is. And we can trim that out. Right, and then we have this sort of nice even flipping topography as we go through it. Uh, and then um, the, exactly how you would, uh, as you design your building, you can start to cut out and, and do really simple operations. So I'm gonna also, so we have a building here that, that intersects this. We can start to look at this. Um, again, you guys should be working in section when you design. So you start to design this around how the thing is gonna sit in the site, how it's gonna touch the ground, uh, as well as how it's gonna touch the sky. Uh, but once you have that those geometries set in place, you can come in here and uh, split this. And then we'll do exactly the opposite. We'll split this with this geometry. Delete that out, and I'll then delete this extra surface out. And I am going to change the color of this so you guys can see this a little bit better. Turn this on the white. I'm going to turn off my contours so I don't need them. So what I've done here is essentially set myself up for uh, this, my building to be inserted uh, however it's been designed uh, and I can come back in and join these. Uh, this is really effective as a strategy when you guys are going to be taking stuff to the CNC mill. I could take this to the CNC mill, build my model on a laser cut and literally insert it into um, the site topography here. All right, uh, and this works really well. You can do this with uh, city context. You just got to understand your boundary geometries. Uh, and make sure that that's the strategy that you're going to be taking to, to build that topography.